Now, we need to change the perspective. How's it going, guys? And thank you for coming back to... Oh, it's a long time and I'll see to do this, so... I gotta warm up my mouth. Come on, come on, come on. Take two. How's it going guys? And thank you for coming back to this channel. I knew I had to do it. I had to face the reality, the new value which was born recently. Sony A6700. I'm using FX30 as the main camera. Oh, by the way, I shot the big budget commercial with that camera and it was so good, it nailed it. Even though I'm using APS-C camera, I haven't tried A6700 yet. I mean, I did already. Anyway, I was feeling that I owe you the A6700 review video. So I chose this camera as the first video in 2024. 2024. Oh, by the way, happy new year. Hope you guys having a great 2024. And I got a kid. Come on. The child was born. Can you believe it? I'm a dad right now. I'm serious, I'm not joking. My kid was born recently. Anyway, now I joined your 2024, so your new year will be much better from now. Okay, now enough of talking. Let's see what this camera can do and let me share my honest thoughts about this camera. So first, let's start from the overall spec. This Sony A6700 has a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. It got the Sony's latest image processing engine, Beyond XR. Many pro video functions are available like a 4K 120fps, S-Cineton, 14 plus stop dynamic range, S-Log3, AI autofocus, user, lot, focus, map, come on. And it has the continuous shooting, creative look, and other pro photography functions. Oh my god, so far it sounds like FX30, but uh, obviously build quality is different. So now let's dive deep in build quality, usability, those stuffs. Okay, first of all, this has a so much better grip than A6400, 6600. Before, when it was a A6600, the grip was shallow, but now it feels pretty secure. But it's still pretty compact and light. To me, this is huge buttons and dials. Now this got a big recording button like this, which tells I'm a legit video camera. Also, this got a dial here at the front, which A6600 didn't have. This allows us to have a quick camera setting control when we are shooting videos. And this photo video quick switch, this is so sweet. You can change photo to video, video to photo in a second. And thanks to this, you can use a different setting for each. This finally got a flip screen. The huge evolution. Also, I think this viewfinder is easier to use than A6600. Maybe this cover got bigger, which makes it easier to comfortable to put eyes on it. About the interface. Even though this camera has amazing specs and got so much better than old versions, in shooting both of photos and videos, this is still casual, easy camera. Those outputs and inputs are fine. USB-C, uh, microphone, SD card slot, mini HDMI, headphone, it's fine. Mini HDMI, okay, it's fine. Uh, I'm for, you know, I forgive you, Sony. But look at this massive solid covers. Come on. Those are definitely annoying when you use uh, camera accessories on this camera. Function is good, but the flexibility, customization, capability are not that good. So that could be one of huge differences between FX30, you know, which is also a PC camera. So now this got a Sony's new menu system like a FX30 ZV-E1. You can choose resolution, camera setting right here, also log on and off. It's pretty much same as FX3 and 30. But the recording display, this one is same as ZV-E1, which is a little different from FX series. I can smell the vlogging camera vibe right here. Overall, this camera evolved so much from A6600. It's super easy to use, easy to handle, and it got a high mobility and usability. Sounds like a better option than a full-frame camera like a 7 IV or the alternative of FX30. But of course, let's dive deep in the image quality. So this got 6K over sampling 4K, but how is it? I know there won't be any sharpness degradation just because of this is APS-C, but seeing is 10 times better than hearing. 
does anyone want to complain about this? No, of course, of course you can't. Also, this got 26 megapixel when it comes to photography, which can provide you the decent quality of photography experience. For Instagram, more than enough. You can even crop the image this much. For printing, I guess it can handle for uh, this size of magazine or book. By the way, I'm working on a climbing guidebook project as a photographer and I'm using FX30 for that because I have to you know, shoot both of videos, photography like a, maybe 60% of photo and 40% of video. So I'm using this FX30 as a photography camera, but it's good. So I think I can show you once it's published. I wanna, I wanna show you how this FX30 can perform in photography field. But A6700 is so much better than FX30's photography performance. Okay, now this is the straight out from the camera, which means the pure S-Log3. So now let's bring the life into this. Come on, look at this. You know what, like a A6600, 6400 could shoot in log, but uh, it was not uh, as good as full frame cameras. But now, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, it's more than fine. I'm totally satisfied with it. Now we have to rethink about like, APS-C cameras. What APS-C cameras can do? More than sharpness, more than resolution, I was shocked by this S-Log color grading capability. Wow, I couldn't believe that I was able to do this much of color grading with a 6000 series. Because this camera finally got 4 to 2 10 bit, it allowed me to color grade in the same way I do with a 74 or FX30. Precise color detail and this 14 plus stop dynamic range. No rough noise on the image and it performances super well on shadow and highlight detail. This lock shooting and color grading capability are more than its price and more than its body size. Not only the image quality, this got a mini pro video functions. 4K 60 and 120 FPS. You can use full resolution up to 4K 60 FPS and you can go up to 4K 120 FPS, but you're gonna have like 1.5, 1.6 times crop. But still, great option. And this is huge. This is huge. The user lot. You can use your own lots when you're shooting log like FX33. Why does this camera have that and why doesn't A7 IV have that? The mystery. But because of that, this can work like a second camera of FX330 in my case. It's much easier to show the actual color to model or client. Also, this got focus mapping and auto framing. So basically, this can do what FX30 can do and this got a little bit of ZV-E1 taste. So far, I feel like a A6700 is the mix of Sony Alpha series and FX series. The design, build quality, usability, when it comes to those things, A6700 got influenced by Sony Alpha. But image quality, function, those things, this got influenced by Sony FX. This got AI autofocus like A7R5. This can detect human face, body, animal, insect, car, plane with the real-time tracking. I think Sony's autofocus technology is beyond the uh, industry's standard level. Especially this AI autofocus. Nothing can beat this right now. It's APS-C, no problem. It's small and compact, no problem. It's not a professional camera, you are wrong. Right now, pretty much all Sony cameras have a professional spec, especially when it comes to autofocus. I guess this is better than FX3 and 30, which I need to make a comparison, but I am feeling this A6700 has a better autofocus than that. I gotta make a video. When it comes to image stabilization, it's like a same old, same old. It's just same as other Sony cameras which have active mode. It didn't get better or worse, but if you compare this with A6600, it got so much better. But the generation is different between a 6600 and 6700, so it's not fair to compare. Anyway, if you have ever seen the MS stabilization performance of a 7 IV, S3, FX3, 30, DVE1, you can think like this A6700 has same IS performance. I see where this is going. 
I haven't tried an A7C2 yet, so I'm not 100% sure, but this is the most balanced camera right now in Sony. It got a viewfinder, an amazing photography performance, including resolution and container shooting, but the video spec and performance is pretty close to FX30, considering this got a user lot, focus mapping, and other pro video functions. And it's $1,400. FX30 is about like $1,800, right? Okay, I will change my statement. Don't start the videography with Sony A7 III. Start it with this A6700. That's my new statement in 2024 for beginners who want to start the videography. But I will review Sony A7C2 soon, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I'm gonna change the statement for, I don't know. As a matter of fact, APC cameras might be better options than full frame cameras for most of you guys. But first, we need to change the perspective. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. And if you like this video, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe. The new year has started. Finally, 2024. The baby was born. Uh, I have a, like a... How can I call that? My, my spirit is on, on fire right now. You know, I am motivated so much. So much like I, you know... Motivated most in my life so far so yeah 2024 will be huge you're gonna see me you're gonna see me come on i will do that i will achieve something huge in this year so stay tuned for the next video i'll see you in the next video じゃあまた久々すぎて終わらせ方が分かんなくなってきたじゃあまた